when I start to shift my consciousness and I discover the possibility that it's not about me, now I have an opportunity to have a very different kind of relationship. Now, at a certain level of my development, you're making me angry. That feels like my truth. Now, I love what Dr. Nathaniel Brandon said about emotions. Emotions are not an infallible guide to the truth. <laughs> he couldn't have been right or on. My, my emotions can be very distorted based on my level of emotional maturity. It starts right here. Welcome back to, to Start Right Here, uh, my podcast here with my buddy, Alan Berger. Alan, uh, here, we're still, we're still going. It's like, uh, and so is the COVID, and so is, you know, so is a lot of stress all over the place. But the one thing we have to rely on is each other on Sundays, you and me and Patrick. I, I had to miss last week because I have tested COVID positive, and I was quite sick last week, and... I am starting to feel better. I can't say that I'm better. I feel less sick than I was. Right, right. Nasty virus. And I'll tell you, I'll put a shout out to prevention here. Um, every effort that you can, every, every bit of energy that you could put in the effort towards prevention is well worth it. Um, you know, people say, well, aren't you glad that you're going to, now that you got it, you didn't end up hospitalized. I said, well, I'd still rather take this thing of not having it. And hopefully I could get to the point where, where I could get, you know, the vaccine and then protect myself that way, because I've been sick, man. I mean, I've had some bad flus, but this is heads and shoulders above what I experienced before. Right. That's, that's what, you know, that's when I've talked to people. Uh, yeah. When I talk to somebody who, who's had this, it's, it's like I kind of interview them and find out. And it's like, and, and interestingly, we talk about age and stuff like that. I, I have a client who's uh, 20 years old and, and he had it. And, and um, just in brief, I mean, that's one of the ways he described, I asked him, I said, can you describe to me what it was like? And I, and I asked him at one point, I said, have you ever had the flu? Cause you know, a lot of people, we call a lot of things the flu and people say, Oh, I got the flu. You know, it's like, no, you don't. If you've had the flu, you know, you know, if we didn't know what the flu was, we would assume we were dying from that. If you ever had it. And it's like, and that's what he said too. The same as you said, he, he said, I, I have had the flu. And he said, this, this, this was, this was way beyond that. Amen. And, and he said, he said, said it was it was really horrific and uh um yeah so it's um I, yeah i just i appreciate you you saying what you're saying because i just keep telling people no these when you're listening to the medical people now right now they're not saying well make make sure you're being very cautious when you get together with family for holidays they're not saying that they're not saying oh some of the families are probably exceptions and can get together you know <laughs> they're saying don't do it they're saying we're not doing it they're saying i'm spending my time alone it, it, or with my household you know it's that uh, it's like it's okay it, you know it's, i put a thing out i think i think on our uh um, Instagram thing that says we're going to be okay, but not yet. Yeah. That's right. So don't, don't, you know, it's like that, that little meme I, I sent you in Patrick a while back that said it was like it, people deal with it. Like you jump out of an airplane, you pull the rip cord, your, your parachute deploys and you're drifting down to the ground and you think, Oh, wow, this is really, this is really work to slow my descent. So I can take off my parachute now, you know, <laughs> And you plunge the rest of the way. It's like, no. And, 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 and it's another thing we learn and, and, and we teach people in recovery. When you're doing something and it's working, what, what, do, what, what do we, I mean, we don't have a corner on the market, but as addicts, we kind of tend to go like, okay, well, I, I guess it's, all, it's worked. I can stop. You know, it's like, it's like I, I did really good not drinking for two weeks. <laughs> I think I can have a drink, drink again. It's like, it's like, no, when it's working, keep doing it, please. That's right. <laughs> I'm, glad that's, you're, I'm glad you're feeling hard. better, but I know it's going to be a long haul for you. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what happened. We relaxed for one minute. We had one oversight in terms of what went on. And we visited my, my wife's folks back in North Carolina and the rest of the family. We rented a place at the beach. And literally, there was 15 people in the house. 15 people have COVID. 
Wow. Everybody in the house came back positive. So it's, it's, it's a very serious thing. And when these guys are saying, don't do it, that's where they're coming from, that this is so infectious, this thing. And I was pretty good at isolating myself from the family overall, mm-hmm. which is probably one of the reasons I'm not sitting in a hospital right now, because my viral load was probably low. Mm-hmm. Um, since I was, you know, probably the second oldest person in the household. Mm-hmm. So that's so that part I, I I handled that part right. But we made some we had some oversights, is you know. And, and we paid a terrible price. One of the unusual symptoms of this is this loss of taste. Yeah. So it's literally, I have no taste. So in, in it, I was going to describe it this way. I have a sense from previous experience what, let's say, a hamburger is going to taste like. Let's say mm-hmm. an In-N-Out burger, right? Mm-hmm. I've had several In-N-Outs. So I know mm-hmm. what that experience is going to be. And when I bite into that In-N-Out, I'm anticipating that taste. Mm-hmm. And then there's nothing. And it's wow. like the memory of it isn't enough to generate it. it it's a very it's interesting just, thing. It's a different misses. process. Oh, I wow. have a memory of the taste. I mean, I can even, in some way, I have a sense of what it tastes like. But when I bite it, it's not there. <laughs> hey, but you know, a great opportunity for dieting. Everything's in an out burger now. Yeah. <laughs> he said that. I wish I had that. No, you don't. Trust me. No, you no, no. As a matter of fact, I was I was online with with somebody from the Emily program, which is a wonderful national uh, eating disorder program, and they and and uh, they they were doing a. a, a they're doing a little video presentation about the loss of taste. If you have COVID this very thing with eating disorder, because it's such a difficult thing if you're, you know, because it's so hard to, you know, when you're dealing with, especially people who were dealing with restriction and things like that. And it's like, it was, it's such a difficult thing. (laughs) Yeah. The grass is always greener in somebody else's taste buds, I guess. But, but I also want to just say, before we go any farther, you, you said the sentence, uh, I literally had no taste and I want you to know, can you imagine how hard I had to fight just to keep all the jokes from yeah. coming out at that point? I had 18 jokes right there, right? These, I, I literally had no taste. Oh God, this is too fucking easy. It's like, <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah. Well, uh, well it, it does come back. I understand. Well, if you had the jokes then then I would be able to practice what, what we're talking about today, right? What are we talking about today? Uh-oh. Not, taking, not it? taking it personally. Give <laughs> me one of those. Beautiful, beautiful segue, my friend. <laughs> it has not, has not <laughs> not compromised the segue portion of my brain. I can't taste the segue. The segue. I, I, it's like, it, it doesn't taste like a segue <laughs> should. Like way, or is that a different thing than a segue? <laughs> To, just, yeah, segways are kind of sweet. Uh, you know, it's like yeah, it's <laughs> if they're done right. No taste. I get. I, I went ahead threw that segue on. I had no taste, but it made sense. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So yeah, and I and, we, and I'm glad we're going to talk about that because it's such it's such you know, especially as we as you have started your on the Thursday night uh, uh, meeting the support the emotional sobriety meeting when you you're now working to 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 bring us all up to speed with emotional sobriety and the 12 steps. And that first session on Thursday was really great. I hope, you know, I like to mention it here because if people who are listening, if you haven't been to this Thursday meeting, please consider joining us. It's really amazing. And what you did a beautiful, you did it with, with COVID, you did a beautiful job of introducing, introducing the whole, I mean, because you really did more than just the first beginning, the first step, you really gave an introduction to the whole, the, the whole layout for what you have in mind for the next year. And it's, it's like, and it's, um, it's, you know, and it's, it's going to be good. And it's, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of people, but it's, a, it, we know that group pretty well. And it's, a, it's, it's a very engaged group. So, uh, you know, I always, want, always, when I'm telling people about you know, asking them to come to the Thursday meeting, I'm going like, it's not just, it's not just coming to listen to Alan or it's not just coming to, to, you know, uh, listen to whoever is, is doing a presentation or something like that. It's, it really is about the community and about the group. There's always something, uh, I, I just always take something valuable from that, that, and this is going to be a real special thing. So, so I appreciate well, you doing I feel it. the same way about it. It's, it's really turned into a, 
something I look forward to every week. I mean, oh, me it's too. the high point of my week for me. I mean, mm-hmm. it's as in as these sessions are. Those are the two things that have gotten mm-hmm. me this COVID thing, the community, and that's what we. You know, I loved the, the line you had from the beginning mm-hmm. of this COVID thing. We are isolating as a community. Yep. We're not alone in this thing. We're isolating as a community, and and that's the spirit of this whole thing. And well, and we have done that, and that Thursday group for us has been part of that. And this with with the with the which is still a group, but that with you and Patrick and I, it's, it's like. But but the other thing I think what we've witnessed is we you know we've witnessed so many other people be able to do that. I mean, this is one of the this is one of the long long term uh, effects I think that is going to to last after this it's you know, i told a, a client of mine i said you know that that she's doing really well and she's a you know one of these double winners you know she's an eating disorder client and uh, she's recovering from eating disorder as well as alcoholism and and uh, and and uh and i know she she used to just be able to just con herself into skipping meetings and every she could she could out, she could talk herself out of anything and she's doing really great now but i said you know one of the things i think about is with with all of this technology and our connect, connectedness and us having in the experience that there really is true intimacy in these connections see that's the thing everybody i thought i i never been to i'd never been to a, a support group on, online until until this one it's like it's like, wow, it's like how, how amazing. So I, I said, you know, people in the future who want to, who want to make up excuses for not going to meetings, it's just going to be so much harder. You know, it's, it's the ice and snow. Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? Turn your damn computer on. That's right. <laughs> That's that has opened this up. That's one of the, one of the things that we've experienced through this COVID is we've all yeah. experienced some new possibilities in terms of staying connected. Well, and we uh, know this, Go ahead. I was just saying, hey, Patrick is also recording the first half an hour of these Thursday nights yeah. as we're discussing this. Now, that's going to be posted on YouTube. So people that have missed, you know, a session or if they want to go back over a session, it's going to be there. And it's a really cool format is that, you know, each week I'll talk for 15, 20 minutes and then I have a discussant. Last week was Mary and she'll mm-hmm. be with mm-hmm. step one. Then you're going to be there for step two and then right. you're going to alternate. And she'll be three yeah. and You'll be four, and, mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's such a cool format because mm-hmm. I thought Mary sweetened the pot wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. She really did, man. She was right on. Doctor Berger, once you bring your mic a little closer. Okay. Thank you. That, that a little better. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. Because well, we care about what you have to say. That's right. I'm glad <laughs> for that. You know, for the for the for the first eighteen episodes of this, we haven't been able to hear you. That's. <laughs> but, but but Patrick and I spoken and we've decided, oh hell, let's <laughs> that's gonna actually be heard in these things. So, so look, let's talk about this not taking things personally because okay. you know it is really I mean, first of all, in terms of improving relationships, you know, I I would be hard pressed to think of one specific thing that someone could do that would have the kind of impact and the kind of effect that not taking things personally has on a relationship. I mean, I think it's that important of a topic. And so I I just want to underscore it um, to that degree because, you know, it sounds like such an easy thing. Don't take it personally, you know, but, we're, as we're going to get into this today, this is a, an incredibly challenging skill is to develop the ability to not take what the other person is doing personally. Well, and, and I think there's, I mean, yeah, and this definitely falls in the category of the old simple, not easy thing that, that you know, it's, it's like, because there's, 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 there's a lot of moving parts here. It's uh, one of the, one of the things I was first thinking was, well, we need to talk about what we mean when we say don't think things personally because even that because this is one of the ways one of the ways by the way we end up taking things personally in relationship is very often not because somebody has said something that's hurt that's hurtful or 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 mean or anything else but that we misunderstand them so it's it's like that's most that's most of the work in couples therapy that i end up doing is if if you can stay in the if if you can not take it personally if you can keep your defenses down and you can keep the conversation going long enough then you have the opportunity for clarification oh i did no no i didn't mean it that way i meant what i meant was so and so so 
in that way, how we take things personally is a part. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't want people to think, and I think sometimes people do just mean we think we're talking like just flip the switch and don't give a shit what people say. It's like, no, that's not it. It's like, it's no, it, it's, we want to pay attention to how, what, you know, again, it's my side of the street. What am I doing? How, if, if I'm, if it feels personal, if it feels like I've been insulted, if I feel like I've been gut punched uh, or even just sideswiped, what, what, how is that happening? We want to slow it down and take it, take it, take a moment. And not just because otherwise what we end up doing is we end up just beating ourselves up for taking something personally. It's like, well, you know, it's the, the, the way I say it is if I have a, if I have a, uh, if I have some kind of strange seizure disorder and you and I are sitting in the same room and I have a, I have a seizure in which I just, just flail my arms and legs around and I knock you upside the head, you know, really hard, you know, and then, and then you take care of me. I, I, I you know, I, I feel better. And, you, and you did not take that personally. You understood this was something wrong with me. However, you still need to go to the hospital because you still got knocked out. We're not asking people not to pay attention to their feelings. It's just, this is going to make it a, a lot easier to process the feelings. Well, I, I think that's important. So, you know, as you were talking, I'd say it's, it's, it's an interesting thing here because rarely, and, and I almost said absolutely, but let's just call it rarely, mm -hmm. do we take things personally in a positive way. My God, Tom just said a wonderful thing about me. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so upset I about it. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, oh God! Jerry, 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 Jerry Seinfeld episode. Yes, I am a great guy. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we don't get upset about that if somebody said something. We think that they've said something nice about us, you know. And, and this is what's really interesting about this, because you know what you said. Bill said it very well, right? He said, "Simple, not easy." And then he went on to say, "A price must be paid." <laughs> and, and so when he says the price must be paid, what it means is it takes a heck of a lot of work consciously yes, to be able to unravel this and, yeah. and to deal because it, it has some far reaching, far reaching roots to it. Right. In, in fact, I think the setup that goes on so early in life that it's, it's uh, that what the other person is doing is about me and see that it's about me syndrome, mm -hmm. which, you know, I love this one author. His name is Christopher Lash, and he was a sociologist at Harvard. I don't know if he's still teaching or not. He wrote a book, and it's not an easy book to read, but it because it's, it's from that academic kind of perspective, mm -hmm. but it was brilliant. It was called The Culture of Narcissism, yeah. and it was about our culture here in the United States. And he did such a good job as to say that every fabric of our culture promotes narcissism. You cannot grow in this culture where you're not thinking it's about me. I mean, look, we're running into that dilemma now with the mask stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you're going to tell me not to wear a mask? Who do you think you are? <laughs> I mean, it's about me. Is, is we have so much trouble letting go. Wait a minute. The mask wearing is not about you. It's about our public safety, right? Our public health it's, is, is what the issue is. But this it's about me is so rooted in our consciousness and this culture. And he went on to say everything that happens in this culture promotes narcissism. So, so when I read that, I said, well, it's not surprising to think that we would end up interpreting so many things that somebody else is doing as that it's about us, mm -hmm. that somehow their behavior is a reflection of how they feel about us. Right. Right. Yes. And, 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 and one piece of that is, you know, is, I mean, one of the things too, what we want people to know is that that self-focus is, you know, we often think about that as just the classic, Oh, aren't you selfish? You thinking only of yourself. You, you know, you want, you just, you want to have, you want your red wagon and you don't want me to have one or whatever it is. It's like, Mo, you know, we, you know, we've talked about, it. I, I I've called it ne negative arrogance. You know, it's like, like, it's like very often, those of us who have who have a history of taking things personally in, in excess, 
I'll raise my hand. I'm, I certainly have that history. It's like, it's not a, it's not a positive thing. Like you said, it's not like I'm going around thinking, Oh, everybody in the world is so enamored with me. I just, I just feel so good about myself. It's, it's, but what we, and this is part of what we want people to be able to do when we talk about the complexity of this is, and this is one of the things I ask my clients to do what I try to, or I try to help people get to, I want them to be as fascinated about themselves as I am about them. You know, I, I mean, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's this investigation that, I mean, you and I have this, we have this in common. We love learning, not, we, we got a lot of the broad strokes, you know, through our training and what have you, but what we get into working with individuals is, these nuances, the the specifics. How does how I know how this works? I know how this works for me, and that might be useful if I'm working with you as my client. But I don't know how it works for you. You know, let's let's look at that. And what I want people to be able to do is not feel like they're supposed to get in there and figure out, you know, where's the switch to, so that I no longer take things personally. Let's see if we can first of all understand, you know, why we do that and how we do that. And it's like and let that be a process. It's because it's it's because it is it is complicated and and if you under, when you understand it also by the way it's good for our self esteem because it makes sense it's like every one of us if you look at your own if we look at our own history oh why would I why would I tend to be so sensitive about that it's like well look at my history well because of this and this and this and this oh I, I call it of course mentality it's like it's the first 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 step towards self compassion oh of course i'm uh, you know of course i'm screwed up in this way how could i not be given my history it's like rather than you know what a freak of nature i am and so this is one of the key like you said the core pieces that when we it's really cool because when we can change this it has a, it has an amazing ripple effect Oh, yeah. when, when you can change this about taking to how you how you respond to what people are saying and how you take it, don't take it personally, and they're able to, to move through and deal with 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 communication in a different way, it can change everything. Yeah, it really can. It really it can create so much freedom in relationships that yes. it, it's 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 incredible. The power of this it is a very, very strong antibiotic. There's no question about mm -hmm. it. I mean, it really does combat that. And so, you know, if we just build on that, I, I was saying to somebody the other day is that when I look at how, let's say now I'm raising Cece, I can see also where that culture of narcissism shows into child rearing. Mm -hmm. You know, Cece has this sense that it's all about her and I reinforce that left and right. Mm -hmm. I make it all about her. You want that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want you to feel good. I want you to be mm -hmm. happy. And mm -hmm. You know, I say that we do it out of love, but, you know, there could be a point where it's a crime of love, right? Is that I keep it without preventing or presenting her with the opportunity to be frustrated. It's right. like we've forgotten the value of frustration. And there's an incredible value to frustration. You know, we can't develop certain parts of us without being frustrated. Well, so as a parent, though, that I mean, and I'm not one, so I'm so I'm going. That's, I mean, that's uh, I, I can even not being a parent when you say that, I can feel overwhelmed by just the the challenge of that. So, I mean, what you're really looking for there is a balance, right? Yeah, that's right. But that ability to say no to a child and then tolerate their terrorist tactics to try right. to give get you to give into that position, which is it's amazing the stamina kids have. Oh, wearing their parents down. Oh, I, yeah, I, I can't even do it with my dog. So it's like, I, you know, it's like, and, and, and I know he's not as smart as Cece. <laughs> he's only got a couple of moves. I mean, she's the, the, the older, the older she gets, the more she's going to, going to, going to, you know, polish this stuff. Yeah. Look, we all come to this legitimately, like you're saying, and I like the, of course, mentality. I, I wrote about that a lot in love secrets is when people have trouble instead of getting mad about it. You know, my first thing is to say, of course we got trouble. Now yeah. let's figure out what we're going to do with it. And in, you know, what you're saying about helping people get curious about themselves, the way I've said it to Tom is that I want people to get interested in themselves in a different way. 
is that most people, when they walk into our office, they've lost interest in themselves. They're doing things in such a, a routine, stereotypical way through the years that this is all they've known. And they don't really know that there's another possibility. And that's the same with this thing about taking it personally, is when you've been doing this for 20 or 30 years, you're not even sure that not taking it personally is a possibility is that there's an even a way to not take it personally. No, and, 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 and you may not even be thinking of it as taking it personally. So you're, what you're talking about are, are ba- basically our default settings. That's it's right. like, it's like, and, and, and when you're in a default setting, it's like what happens is you disengage. That's what, what you're talking about. You disengage in terms of, you don't have to focus on it. It's like, it's just, it's just the way it is. You shrug your shoulders. It's like, it becomes part of the shrug of like, this is the day to day. And we're not, e- we're not even naming it. That's right. And, and that's that we become automatons, right? That kind yeah. of, a thing. our behavior is so fixed. Mm-hmm. You know, that we just go on and in some ways, you know, many of us even get bored with ourselves. (laughs) I mean, we've been doing it so much. It's like, you know, look, it's it's to me, boredom is is a is is a dynamic in relapse that most people don't explore is that people get to a place in their recovery where they just get bored with their recovery. That's oh, recovery. man, it's, it's, the, it's the most underrated danger there is in, in dealing right. with recovery. Bored, boredom, because the word itself is boring, it's like it's, it's weird because, because it is, it, you know, boredom and isolation. It's like those two things, those two, those two little words, you know, are, are so dangerous. Yeah. You know, because because and you're and I never made that connection until just now with this. This is that. So part of what what I'm doing or what we're doing, when we're working with clients and get, wanting to get them to like I like the way you said it, uh, think about themselves in a different way. And I think about getting become fascinated with their own intrapersonal process is part of what we're doing is, is we want to reengage their interest in themselves. Right. Which Wait, is ironic, by the way, because you were talking about n- narcissistic thing, and, and, but we, but so I don't even know how to, this fits together. But it's interesting. I noticed just as as an observer of this conversation that we're now talking about how do we get people to think more about themselves? Yes, in a different way. In, in a, a different way, right? In a different way. In a way where there's they're curious about it. In in what are they in in uh, in Buddhism they call it the child's mind, right? Mm-hmm. That, it's to just observe your thinking. And, and look at your yourself with the child's mind. We're talking about something similar, you know, is, is to be able to experience yourself differently. But people need to have, first of all, you know, this Gregory Bateson used to say this, and he was one of the, had a very, very powerful effect on psychotherapy because he's one of the guys that said, sometimes you just need new information. Sometimes it's not about going back and changing your childhood. Sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. And when people get new information, now there's new possibilities for them. And you've seen this and I've seen it, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I pass along something that to me is such a something I've said a million times. And for somebody else, they discover it's like, oh, my God, you just given me such a gem. I mean, I I have I have I have a. A question or something that might add to this conversation. Uh, in the start right here, Instagram, I uh, quoted Tom in a post. I said, it's not about what happens to me. It is always about how I respond. And one of uh, our followers uh, took it personally and said uh, her response was this. And I thought you guys would have an interesting response. Uh, <laughs> this is toxic positivity. This type of saying is a big reason people are afraid of having their feelings and showing them and having normal human reactions. Sometimes things are terrible and your response is justified no matter what it is. And I think I wanted to bring this up because uh, it's a kind of seeking validation or people that uh, have pain or trauma or whatever, they're uh, the piece that I think when they look at this, uh, this quote about it's not what happens to me, it's about how I respond, which to me ties in emotional sobriety and a lot of things you always talk about. Uh, they feel like there's a piece of I'm not being validated in the pain that I'm feeling or whatever it is that I'm going through, what I am taking personally. And I just wanted to know uh, what you guys thought about that or if it relates. 
Well, well, I, I saw that and 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 did respond to that. And I do, I, and I, I say I know as in, as we do in 2020. I know this woman. And I like her a lot. I've seen, I've seen we've exchanged posts and stuff like that. And, I, and and it was surprising to me that that because what I felt like is happening is just she really. I mean, is a good example of somebody who just I wanted to clarify. It's like it's it's like it's it you know she misunderstood I, what I think. I, I think what I said was I'm not sure how you could see this as judgmental. I mean, first of all, I thought. You know, I, I don't even say you or, or even we in that statement. I just say I. So I'm only it's, uh, literally I'm only talking about myself. So so it, but it, it, it's. Um, but I, I guess the thing I'd be interested in what Alan thinks is it, like the thing, the thing that I want to be sure we don't do in situations like that, because the, that that can get me my hit my that's a defensive response. In my opinion, is she had a defensive response, which which naturally tapped tapped into immediately my defensive response, and so my my deal was, it, you know, it hurt my feelings. Okay, so the, the, you know, it's like so. This is about me not taking it personally too. It's like, like the idea is my first, my reflex doesn't change. It's like oh, you know, oh, it hurt my feelings. Now when I looked at it, I go like, well, that's not what I meant. So it's, I mean, I didn't do it. You know, whatever it was that has hurt her feelings is not me, but it's like. I needed to walk through that and be able to remind myself of that, work through that and see that I hadn't done anything uh, because, and not as a matter of taking it personally, as much as if I, if I say something and somebody responds defensively or is hurt, I first, if, you know, if, if Patrick, if you tell me I've hurt your feelings or made you mad, the first thing I want to do is ask you why and tell me about it. Because if in, it's the 10th the step, if, if, if I've done something wrong, I want to make amends, you know, if I've done something, but, but a lot of times, we end up, we hurt people or people feel hurt in response to us just because what we say kind of taps into something that is tender to them. And it's like, and I like, I love what you just said about, uh, because I think it's probably true. Somebody who felt like they were just really not being validated for the pain that they felt. So that's kind of, that's kind of a scattered response, but what do well, you think, Alan? Patrick, well, it, 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 let, let me just wrap my head around a little bit. What was the quote you put down? That what did you um. say? That Tom said, <laughs> "It's oh, uh, technically it's my fault because I I uh, quoted Tom. Tom didn't quote himself. Uh, it's mm -hmm. taken from the website, mm -hmm. his website. It's yeah. not about what happens to me. It is always about how I respond." So, so, right. So see, so her reaction to this is a great example is that what she is hearing Tom say to her is your pain doesn't matter. Right. That's what she is, is hearing. I think that that makes her upset about it. And Tom's saying, well, my God, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's how you deal with it. That's really important. I'm not in any way saying that I don't have empathy for it, that it could be a terrible thing that's happened in your life. Can people grow even when terrible things happen to them? No yes. question about it. I mean, see, that's, that's the thing that we keep circling back to. We, we you know, the, the whole field has called it now post-traumatic growth instead of post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad for that shift in emphasis, right? Cause I come more out of a humanistic, um, place in terms of, of thinking about things, which is looking at our, our possibilities, right? And human beings are able to digest unbelievably painful and difficult experiences and grow from them. Mm -hmm. And we know this from natural experiments that have taken place, that survivors from Auschwitz, right? Dr. Um, Victor Frankl is, comes mm -hmm. to mind. He's an example of someone who was in the most abhorrent um, situations that you can imagine that a human being has to experience. And he said that his experience was, is that he came out of that much more mature and, and, and spiritual than when he went into it. Mm -hmm. And he took that terrible experience that I can't imagine the depth of, of suffering and anxiety and, that he experienced for many years in his life, as well as what he witnessed. You know, they talk about post-traumatic stress can also be based on seeing somebody else that you love and care about get, get killed or murdered or something like that. Well, how many times did he witness these things? And here's a man that took all of that 
and was able to put it together in a way that helped so many people cope with difficult and painful things in their life. So that's a testimony to what Tom is saying, I believe, is, is that, you know, in no way, I know Tom, he's a very empathic man. He's not going to dismiss and and somebody's emotions like that. And, and that's not what he was saying. He's really saying this thing about that. Look, is, is you, you are, there's no question we can be victimized by things in life. Yeah. I don't create a hurricane coming and wiping my house out. I mean, or an earthquake, just there's damaging things or a wildfire like we have out here in California or whatever. Or if I'm growing up and being molested, that has nothing to do with me. I'm not responsible for that happening. I am a victim of that experience. But there's another layer to this is do I continue to be victimized by it? And that's what we're talking about. Can I somehow digest the experience and no longer let it define me in a negative way, in a pathological way that now keeps me from being able to enjoy my life to whatever possibility is available to me? Right. And see, that's what we're talking about more, right? Is, is this being able to take any experience we have and digesting it in the proper way and growing from it? And we right. can go ahead, finish that. I, I have something you've inspired me. Go. Okay. Okay. The, what you're helping me see is that, is that, um, because so many of us are used to, I speak for myself, this is, this is how I was programmed and was for a long time. And, and I know that I'm not in, unusual in that way is we are kind of waiting for somebody to tell us we're doing something wrong, you know, and, and, and some of, by the way, I, I, as somebody who really loves to write these little nutshells, these little one-liners, I'm very careful about them. I try real hard to be sure they're not, they're not, trite or just huge generalizations of the obvious because because i think there are some people in our business who do that 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 uh that if i'm if i'm being really honest i find myself judging so so it's, it's like i don't want to do that it's it's like um but what you're helping me see is that piece where this when we say to people don't we're going to teach we're gonna, we want you to learn along with us i sort of say teach you how but it's like we're learning it too it's learn along with us how to not take things personally how not to let that run the show. It's, um, it's, it's not to say, oh, you're responding wrong. Your feelings are wrong. It's, it's like, it's, it's more about where we're going to go with it. It's like, because what you said earlier indicated that what happens is that my favorite little metaphor is that we drop an anchor. You know, when, when, once you take something personally, you stop. You know, so if the idea is in this particular case, when I when I when I respond to what Patrick was saying, when I saw this this woman's response, it hurt my feelings. That was the first feeling I, I had. It's it's like you know. Now I know myself well enough to know that that somebody that if, if somebody that you know that I disagree with vehemently, you know, writes me a horrible critical letter. I know one of the things I feel is my feelings are hurt. It's like, that's just, that's just a natural thing that, that happens to me. What I don't do is I don't stop there. That's that, that's part of the process. What is the, what is that feeling about? Well, I know where that feeling is. It's, it's, it's not, and it's not that person It's you know, that person is not, I'm not being a victim. I'm not, that person is not doing that to me. I'm taking that and doing something with it, but ultimately, and this is what I, I hope I put across well in my written response to her, on, Inst on our Instagram thing is what I was really saying is, is basically ultimately, no matter what happens to me, no matter how wonderful or how horrible, it's like the way that I want to define myself is by how I respond. That's for my definition. It's not, it's, it's not, you know, how I feel, what happens, whatever the, it's like, because even if my response is, you know, I tell people this all the time about my, if I, I say, I'll either, I'll either meet my goals because I've, you know, being a writer or something's really important to me. I'll either meet my goals as a writer and as an author, or you can come to my funeral and say, that guy never stopped trying, you know? And it's like either one of those, I, I prefer the first, but I, either one of those is okay because I, de that's my definition of myself. Somebody who is not going to quit trying to, to contribute to what it is I want in my life and to be the person that I want to be. 
Yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean I don't have those feelings. And it doesn't mean the whatever feelings you're having are wrong. Nobody's telling you you're wrong about your feelings. Now we may, I think we may be able to show you a better way in which you're going to feel better. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. I, and I, I'm just thinking, right. It's, it's not like you're, you're dismissing the emotion Mm-mm. Let's just stay with taking it personally. So if I take it personally, I am taking it personally. And somebody would say, well, isn't it personal? Let's say Tom really was meant to say something to hurt you. Isn't that personal? And I'd say, no, if I took it personal, Tom can't hurt me. I'm hurt because it's connecting to something, some rule I have, some idea I have. And because of that, I get hurt. Tom's not hurting me. And see, it's, it's, this is so hard because because our, our, our level of consciousness is so undeveloped is that we look at things as cause and effect. If you do this, you're making me feel this way. Right. And you'll hear it in the language. It's just so common in the language. I mean, mm-hmm. it, for a while, there was a whole form of therapy that got people to just try to, to take a language and, and intervene on the language part of it. Not that, that you're making me angry, I'm angry, like, for example. Right. right. And uh, when, I, when you do this, I feel. I feel this. Yeah, yeah. I think those people miss the point. The mm-hmm. point is, is that people do feel that when you do this, you know, you do make me angry. I, I'm holding you responsible for how I feel. See, they miss that piece of it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, when if, if depending on my level of development, if you say this, you're making me angry. That's my experience of it, that you're doing that. But what we're talking about today, when we say not taking it personally, there's another possibility of raising your consciousness and moving your consciousness to a whole other level that has nothing to do with what people are doing, is that what they're doing is not making you feel a certain way. They're just being who they are. And if I'm able to step aside from that for a minute, I can see if Tom is talking to me that way, he's upset about something. That's all. That's all it means. It doesn't mean anything about his feelings towards me. In fact, him turning to me to tell me he's upset means that he's still trying to figure it out with me. If I want to look at what really it means, that there's still an attempt to try to repair the relationship. But let me just finish this thought and then go a little further with it. Is that so? When I start to shift my consciousness and I discover the possibility that it's not about me, now I have an opportunity to have a very different kind of relationship. Now, at a certain level of my development, you're making me angry. That feels like my truth. Now, I love what Dr. Nathaniel Brandon said about emotions. Emotions are not an infallible guide to the truth. <laughs> he couldn't have been right or on. My, my emotions can be very distorted based on my level of emotional maturity. The more immature I am, the more I'm going to take things personally, the more I'm going to be reactive to it, and the more rules I'm going to have about how you're supposed to behave. And so that's part of where I get upset is if you start violating my rules, how dare you talk to me that way? You know, I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, well, I can't stand it. My my partner is not showing any respect for me. I go, what do you mean? Well, the way they talk to me. I go, what about the way they talk? Well, they'll call me names and stuff like that. And I'd say, so your rule is, is that if somebody loves you, that they're never going to call you names, right? That they're going to be able to control their emotions to such a point where they're going to be able to communicate everything to you that's just kind of like going through cheesecloth. It gets filtered out and you only get the best of the cream, right? The best of the regatta cheese. You don't get the other parts of it. Well, it doesn't work that way. People don't work. I don't work that way. You don't work that way. I said to them, do you lose it sometimes? Well, yeah, of course. But you see, my rules, I'm not disrespecting you when I talk to you that way. I'm just mad. Mm-hmm. But but when you talk to me that way, you're disrespecting me. See, that's the craziness that we have with this stuff is that it gets very, very complicated around these rules. And so what I say to someone is if they're yelling at you and saying whatever they're saying to you, the fact that they think that they can be heard by you is the respect. 
The fact they can talk to you any way they want to means that they're not afraid that the relationship is going to go away if they're being themselves. And to me, that's the ultimate respect. That if you can yell at me and say, you're a fucking idiot, that, you know, you're stupid and da, 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 stuff. And I'm sitting there going, wow, you must really trust me. Okay. Uh, no, I, okay. I got it. I got what you, there's, there's two different ways this went. I want to, and I want to go back to the first one. What I wanted to say that one, that one's one of those places where you and I would find some disagreement, but I don't think we'll find disagree. This is what I've learned about when I disagree with you. There's a, there's a core point that we don't disagree about. And, and the, in the application, there's some disagreement. It's like, like, and, and so we, we'll, I want to dog ear the idea of going back to rules in a relationship. Okay. Sometimes, but the thing that was enlightening to me to begin with before, uh, before that part was when, when you, when you said what you said about the, 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 when you, I feel thing, which, which God, that gets on my last nerve is it's like, you know, when everybody, when somebody's been to too damn much, I, I wrote, on site is a great, good I, I wrote, I wrote, a, I wrote a book called earning your own respect one time. And it's like, it's, and it's, I started with a, a, a list of side effects of having too much therapy. It's like, I don't know if I've ever sent that, that list to you. I'll send it to you. It's like, like, it's just, it, it's just people that just get on your last nerve because they've just been in therapy too much. It's like, and it's not necessarily because we, I've been in a lot of therapy. So it's, it's like, it's, but it's like the idea. Sometimes you just got, we just kind of get on each other's nerves that way. But when you said, no, my truth is you made me angry. It's like, and so I, in terms of my English major self playing with the words, I thought, okay, I can get my head into that one because that way I can go, okay. Alan made me mad. Okay. It's like, it's, it's like, so, but then we go back to what I was saying at the outset about, about the entry and what you were saying about getting them interested in, it, in themselves in a different way is Alan's made me mad. That's interesting. I wonder how I'm doing that. Okay. Rather than, rather than, you know, it's like what he's doing right. Yeah. What he's doing because is Alan doing something? Well, yeah, sure. Alan did something. I mean, it's like, because uh, with, you know, without that, but this is that place that, that, you know, and I don't think the, the 12 steps is the corner on the market, but this is where I learned it. It is one of, one of the, the most foundational things I've learned from being in 12 step recovery is your side, my side of the street first, not my side of the street only. Because a lot of times I think people, I see people in the program sometimes take that so much that they let everybody else off the hook. And they'll go like, you know, you know, oh, no, it's just me. I'm the sick guy. You know, it's like, no, no. But you only start right here. That's the name of this damn show. It's like, like the idea is, no, I can only start by changing me. I can only start by learning about me. So if, if Alan's making me mad, how am I doing that? How, what is my, what are my dance steps? What am I participating in? Now, from that, once I learn more about that, I probably very would be able to say to you, Alan, I need to talk to you about a couple of things that come up in our communication. And I want to ask you about some stuff. And, and that's, and that's where we get back into the rule part because this stuff, because rather than just be offended that you say this or say that and go like, you know, I need to, you know, maybe I'm going back to the, when you, I feel, but it's like, I need to tell you when, when you spoke, to, when you spoke to me in that particular way, that, that really made it hard for me to keep listening. Right. You know, and I, I found myself getting really pissed off. Da, 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 da. So I'm wondering if we could do some different things in our communication, you know, and so. Yeah, and you could also do this at the end of it. See, and this is this mm -hmm. is where that is, this is the place that and that's fine to ask for that. Is it possible to do something different if mm -hmm. you're asking that sincerely? Mm -hmm. But here's the other part that you could say. You could say, look, until I get healthier, then when you start to, when you need to scream like that, keep screaming. And then when you're finished, I'll circle back around with you because I'm not able to stay connected during that time. It's too, too much of a hardship for me, mm -hmm. but I don't want to, to ruin our relationship. So I know that this is right now, that's the best you can do. So you keep screaming about it and then I'll circle back in, in an hour or so. And then let's see if we can talk about it in a way that might be, you know, better for me. Uh, to be able to get someplace with it with you, because when that's happening, I'm not able to. So I just own my limitation in it. You see, right? What it's, yeah, right. It's, it's it, we, we, we're problem solving now. Now we're problem. Yeah. Solving. Yeah. Where, you know, it's different is that it, I, I just see this so much. So like Cece will come up to me. I hate you. I hate you. You know, I, she doesn't hate me. Now, if I was in it, it as, and I've said this before, like with, with girlfriends, right. Mm -hmm. I'd say, how, 
what do you mean you hate? You can't, if you love me, you can't talk to me that way. <laughs> You're right. I have these rules with CC. I know that, that this is the best she can do. She's two years old. She's right. just dealing with things. But see, for some reason, when somebody gets into an adult body, I think that they're going to be different. And there's uh-huh. no reason to. There's no reason. Everybody at any point is doing the best they could. If they could talk to you in a different way, they would be talking to you in a different way. But can we create an atmosphere that allows someone to grow without being judged? See, that's all I'm saying is if no, I and I, and I get and I get that I, I just the place I where I get rid of my rules that all it is is what I say. You say whatever you want to say in any goddamn way you want to say it. And I'll tell you, I don't like it. And I and if I don't want to hang around, I won't hang around with it. You're free to be whatever, whoever you are. And I'm free to be whoever I am. And we'll come together at some point. If we care about each other, we will. But we don't need to do it by having rules. What we need for me, that's that's what I'm just saying is that that this is that emotional freedom piece of it is that and and if I don't take it personally, I don't need to have any rules for you. If I can see that and I love this is what Dr. Kempler used to bring to me and I connected something today I hadn't connected before. He used to say, if you want to be more personal. In a relationship, you have to stop taking things personally. Right. That makes sense. If you want to be more feels right, yeah. you got to stop taking things personally because only then you can see the other person. I remember Walt used to say, I'd say, well, God, you know, I, I'm very interested. I was reading some stuff on Jay Haley. Can I talk? He goes, I don't care about Jay Haley. And I'm going, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. He goes, I'm not, I don't care what he's doing. I care what I'm mm-hmm. doing. <laughs> he goes i'm so focused on what my part is i get lost <laughs> looking at all this other stuff i'm more interested in seeing what i can do to to work with do any of these ideas help you they don't help me if they help you mm-hmm. keep reading them out they don't they don't do it for me right wow interesting it was a very interesting experience first of all it violated the rule mm-hmm. my rule was that if you're going to be a teacher you have to be open to all these ideas from all these other places and Walt was saying, nope, I'm not interested in those ideas. I'm interested in what the heck I'm doing. You want to do that? Go ahead and find it. If that gives you something, but it's not giving me anything. Aha. I got it. I got it. I saw right. it. And what, but what, see, what, 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 that's what he's talking, what he's pointing to is that this is, this is why I, I sometimes call myself the great dis- disclaimer, you know, because I'm always going like, because, about, you know, if I'm not careful, every paragraph I write begins with this paragraph may not apply to you. Right. It's like, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's what he's talking about is individuality. He's, he's, you know, it's, it's like, cause I, cause I, I identify with, 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 with what you're saying. Absolutely. The idea is, you know, and you've probably heard me say, I've said this in our points of intervention workshop, you know, is yeah, we learn from, we learn from other, other therapists and we copy them and we try these different things on, or people who learn from us may try different things that we're doing, but ultimately, you know, as you move along in your career in this job, when somebody asks you what model of therapy you use, you should be able to say mine. You know, it's, it's like, it's not like I, you know, it's like, I am this or I am that. It's like, that's you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's it's my, own, yeah, yeah. that's right. And, and, you know, and then some people say to me, well, what, what do you mean? Somebody, nobody can make you feel anything. You know? What if somebody comes up to you and sticks a gun to your head? Aren't you going to be, I, didn't he make you afraid? Mm-hmm. I said, no, if I get afraid, it's because I value life. If I'm suicidal and a guy sticks a gun to my head, I say, my God, thank God that you showed up at this point in time. I was going to have to shoot myself. Now you're going to do it for me. (laughs) You know, it's I'm not going to have that reaction because of what it means to me. You see, I am the meaning generator. I generate the meaning of what happens. You don't do that. It, I, it's the meaning I assign to whatever experience I'm having that creates the experience. I, I love this. I love the, um, Don Miguel Ruiz's little book called The Four Agreements. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, these are the agreements to, to, uh, to help you establish personal freedom is what he calls it. a practical guide to personal freedom is what he calls it. Mm-hmm. So his first agreement is be impeccable with your word. We're, well, I'm not going to go into a lengthy discussion about that, but it's not what you think it sounds like. It's not be impeccable word your word, word with other people. It's be impeccable with your word with yourself. Right. It's very interesting. He defines sin as as not honoring yourself. 
that's where the problem begins. If you can't honor yourself, you're not, your word's not going to be impeccable with other people. If your word's not impeccable with yourself, that's number one. Then he says, the second thing to create this personal freedom, he calls it, don't take anything personally. And I want to read a few excerpts from this. Okay. He goes, whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. He goes, using an earlier example, if I see you on the street and I say, hey, Burger, you're stupid. Without knowing you, it's not about you. It's about me. If you take it personally, then perhaps you believe you're stupid, which I would have at some point in time. And I tell everybody, I'm a lot smarter now that I realize how stupid I am because you can call me stupid and it right. doesn't bother me anymore. You go, yep. Maybe you think to yourself, well, how does he know I'm so stupid? Is he clairvoyant? <laughs> 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 Can everybody just see how stupid I am? Is it that apparent to everybody? He goes, you take it personally because you agree with whatever was said. As soon as you agree, the poison goes through you. Take that in again. As soon as you agree, meaning you sign a certain meaning to it, the poison goes through you. And you are trapped in what he called the dream of hell. I love that. Mm -hmm. You're trapped in the dream of hell. What causes you to be trapped in what we is what we call personal importance. Personal importance or taking things personally is the maximum expression of selfishness because we make the assumption that everything is about me. During the period of our education, or he calls it our domestication, we learn to take everything personally. We think we are responsible for everything, me, 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 always me. If you're upset, it's my fault, you know, that kind of stuff. Nothing other people do is because of you. Right. Nothing other people do is because of you. It is because of themselves. All people live in their own dream, in their own mind. They are in a completely different world from the one that we live in or you live in. When we take something personally, we make the assumption that they know what is in our world and we try to impose our world on their world. Even when a situation seems so personal, even if others insult you directly, it has nothing to do with you. What they say, what they do, and the opinions they are or they give are according to the agreements they have made in their own minds. Their point of view comes from all the programming they received during domestication. He goes on to say, um, taking things personally makes you easy prey for these predators. He calls them the black magicians. Yeah. <laughs> They can hook you easily with one little opinion and feed you whatever poison they want. And because you take it personally, you eat it up. You eat all their emotional garbage and now it becomes your garbage. But if you do not take it personally, you are immune in the middle of hell. I love that. Immunity to the poison in the middle of hell is the gift of this agreement. When you take things personally, you feel offended and your reaction is to defend your beliefs and create conflict. Just what you were saying. Right, right. You make something big out of something so little because you have the need to be right and make everybody else wrong. You also try hard to be right by giving them your own opinions. In the same way, whatever you feel and do is just a projection of your own personal dream, a reflection of your own agreements. What you say, what you do, and the opinions you have are according to the agreements you have made, and these opinions have nothing to do with me. He says, it's important for me it is not important to me what you think about me. And I don't take what you think personally. I don't take it personally when people say, Miguel, you are the best. And I don't take it personally when they say, Miguel, you are the worst. Mm -hmm. He says, I know that when you are happy, you will tell me, Miguel, you are the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you're mad at me, you're going to say, Miguel, you are such a devil. Mm -hmm. You are so disgusting. How can you say these things? Either way, it does not affect me because I know what I am. I don't have the need to be accepted. Uh, Fritz Perls calls it as soon as I am dependent on you for my self-esteem, I become your slave. Right. Okay. L let me interrupt you here because I know right. we're going to run out of time, but just let me just finish this because this is he All right. Sense. I'll allow it. He goes, um, I don't have the need to have someone tell me, Miguel, you are doing good or how dare you do that? No, I don't take it personally. Whatever you think, Whatever, whatever you feel I know is your problem and not mine. It is the world. It is the way you see the world. It is nothing personal because you are dealing with yourself, not me. Now, you may tell me, Miguel, 
what you're saying is hurting me, but it is not what I'm saying that is hurting you. It is that you have wounds that I touch by what I have said. You are hurting yourself. There is no way I can take that personally. Okay, go ahead. Okay, no, no, I need, if you, if you haven't lost your place, I want you to go back and read the part that where at the beginning, when you talked about the moment that you let that in, the poison is in you. Yeah. That you remember that? I, I want to say something about that. Read that part. Uh, uh, you drink their poison, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he goes, I, he said it earlier on in this part, but this part he just says is that you eat all their emotional garbage. Now it becomms your garbage. But if okay, you don't that's take it, it personally, yeah, you're a, yeah. Yeah. So the based on the the intrapersonal approach that I use, it's like what I what I where I and you know not not where I took off with that at that point is is the moment you take that, then the poison becomes yours. It's like what that does. What's really happening, in my opinion, is your the gift of that person is is now making you aware of the poison that's already in you. Because, because one of the ways I've said the same thing is when we talk about the little should monster guy in our head or the big should monster guy, that basically if, if, people, if people insult you, if people, if people criticize you and it hurts your feelings, it's because there's somebody inside you that agrees. Like, like, and it sounds like he says the same thing. It's like, so like if you, you know, if you, if you tell me, if you say, Tom, you're a disorganized man, you know, and you know, I go, okay. <laughs> it's like, you know, that doesn't hurt my feelings. If you say, you know, Tom, you, you know, if you say you, you don't, you know, you don't, uh, uh, you're not this or that or something It's important to me. You don't really care about this or that. And I'm going like, there's a possibility I'm going to find myself going like, wait, you know, and that's because there's a voice in there that says, yeah, you're, you're maybe that voice that tells me I'm a fraud or something like that. So, one of the places about that too, that that also takes us back into our own. That's where we, that's where a lot of this stuff about not taking things personally means we need to be able to recognize how we're responding in our, in the, in the, in the, in the interpersonal world so that we can take that into the intrapersonal world where we are, can find the healing of that. It's like, I, I think right on. And it, it can even go. And that's right. See, so that's one thing. So if, the way Bill Wilson said it, and I always have loved this statement, he says, it's a spiritual axiom that no matter the cause, every time we're disturbed, there's something wrong with us. So the question is, what's wrong? So you're putting your finger on one thing. My God, if somebody says something to me and I agree with him, now it, I say it's two against nobody. That's the way I say it to people. There's two against nobody. You're not on your side. You're on their side. You've taken their position in it and you've lost supporting yourself, right? That's what. The other thing can be is that it violates a rule. And mm -hmm. so let's say that you grew up in a family where there was verbal abuse and it was painful for you. You're going to come out of that family with the rule. When you love people, you don't talk to people that way. Now, mm -hmm. that's your rule. I understand that that comes out of a lot of pain. But if you work through that pain, instead of trying to deal with that pain through regulating and controlling everybody else, you're going to have a lot more freedom. And see, that's that's where people struggle is they'll have a painful event that's happened in their life. And instead of digesting it and getting personal their personal freedom yeah. from that experience, <laughs> that experience becomes a reason for rules. And now those rules become so darn important that if you love me, you must be this way. You right. must do this kind of thing because it's going to reverse the pain I've had from the past. And you and I know that no partner can fix your pain from your past. They can love you while you work through it. They can support you while you work through it. But it's your job to do that, right? They can provide an atmosphere that's very helpful. But right. we've got to do that work. All right. So I, now you help me. I've discovered that place I was talking about where, where we have the agreement and then where I noticed when you're saying stuff, I'm going like, I don't agree with that. And I don't agree with that. It's like, and it's not like wrong. It's like, I don't, it's, it's a, it's an English major language thing, but the, 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 the point, my, the place where I, where I uh, remember, remember, I'm going to try to be brief about this, but I'm going to, I got to set the stage. Uh, when we first started working together, there were a couple of times that we talked about it afterwards because you would work with a client in, in, in demonstration in, in a workshop 
And then you would invite me to come work with the same client. And it's like, it became very confusing, at least to me. I think it did to the client too, because we are very similar, but we're not ent entirely the same. And it's, and it's like, it was like, we, it, you know, we couldn't both do that. And so what I realized is, and I'm going to work on this because there's more I want to talk to you about this as we go along, but it's, it's the, what I realized is, I, th I think I'm doing a, a very similar thing, not necessarily the same thing you're doing, but what I end up doing with somebody is once we've identified the intrapersonal response, like you said, two against nobody. It's like, like if, if, if you say something to me that, that I realize hurts my feelings and then I go, well, that's because the, the, you know, the, the should monster is saying that stuff to me. Everything about what I'm doing as a therapist is going to go over here with this person going, okay, we're going to work from the inside out. We're going to work with the intrapersonal stuff where, you know, whereas I, I think where I found myself getting distracted is in, in what you're saying today, you keep talking about, and you keep talking about the, the interpersonal and encouraging this person to stop taking this personally outwardly to this other person. Whereas I think my way is to go in and say, let's go in and let's, let's heal this thing from inside so that you don't believe this shit anymore. Right. Uh, but I think the result is the same. Well, and, and I'll do that too. See, I'll do that too. If a person's taking it on and they agree with that person, mm -hmm. the, the, the thing that people though, where it's subtle is the rule stuff about how people are supposed to talk. See, that's where it gets a little stickier. If you'd say I'm stupid and I agree with you, uh, it's it starts to get clear that I'm reacting to that because of my pain. The rules become a little bit more difficult for people because they've, they really believe that this is the way it's supposed to be. Well, this is how love is supposed to be, or this is how a relationship yeah life or whatever and and when we get into a supposed to i, I love the way this 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 um this fellow who wrote the book on forgiveness and i'm blocking his name right now um fred lushkin he goes life happens and the problem is is we object <laughs> mm -hmm, we do he goes we object <laughs> as soon as we start objecting our energy goes into the objection we can't solve the problem like you were saying a minute ago or deal with what's going on mm -hmm. because we're all hung up with that. You're not supposed to be this way. But let's say if you take what I'm saying, let's say that you're in a relationship with someone and they're mad and they're cursing you out and it's terrible for you. Ha if you were not able to take that personally, you'd say, my God, you're in a terrible amount of pain here. What happened, it just was so painful for you. We, obviously, I'm interested in that. And you yeah. like, well, yeah, but by doing that's fine. But but getting, I mean, I want to, we want to acknowledge getting people to that place is 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 a massive ordeal. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's a and, massive and, ordeal. It is right. a and to, and to me that there's there's a distinction that we can return to it's like there's a distinction between what i call the what i think of is when you talk about the unenforceable rules or the unsp unspoken rules i call it the invisible policy manual you know everybody comes from a family where we have an invisible policy manual everybody knows what's in the damn manual but nobody's ever sa says that stuff and we take that and we apply it to our new relationships and and, we're, and it's going to screw us over every time once once we pull that policy manual out and we start breaking do what uh, my wife Dee, Dee calls breaking rules that need to be broken okay. you know basically she says you'll feel guilt because it's positive guilt because you're breaking rules that need to be broken uh but 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 the place and we, and we just need to have this conversation about relationship i think because because I, because I, I agree with you that the unspoken unconscious rules that we apply without knowing that, you know, are going to cause nothing but trouble, but I'm pretty sure I wouldn't still be married if there weren't some rules that we agree on in our, in my marriage. So we, we may have to have that conversation. Yeah. Well, like which comes to mind, what rule comes to mind? Like, uh, well, I mean, the, ba the basic stuff are our fidelity, uh, uh, that kind of stuff, but there were other, there were remember, but, remember on Thursday night, that one. Yeah. Woman yeah, that. yeah. It's like, it's yeah. like, but, but the idea, yeah, it, it's like, we can always come to the, the, uh, I mean, other rules have to do our very personal rules that, that, that thank God, uh, we had a wonderful couple therapists that helped me work, work through in terms of, 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 you know, learning how to, to 
go through a process of not not taking things personally, which was a big piece that she taught me. So we could talk more. Oh, no, about but that. Let's with that for a minute, because it's an interesting thing. So let's say, and not that this would ever happen to you guys. Mm -hmm. So so you're you know, and I have a rule too. I want to be in a monogamous relationship, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just with Jess. I'm not interested in being involved. There are people that want a polyamorous relationship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they would like to love more than one person. Mm -hmm. So let's say. Jess wakes up tomorrow and says, I've changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Now the issue becomes, how do I deal with it? Do I mm -hmm. now get mad at her? Well, how dare you do this? You can't change your mind. You're mm -hmm. supposed to. You agreed to this with me. You got married with me. These were the rules we got married to. Or do I say, wow, that's not what I want anymore. I love you. Well, the, the, okay, but see, okay, you yeah, see but the rule, saying, yeah, yeah, but the rule, yeah, but the the rule is, uh, yeah. the rule is, I, I want that. I'm not saying she has to want that. No, but I, no, the I, rule. Okay, what's the what's the real the it, on the ground? The practical rule would be if that were to happen here, it would be the rule would be we are going to talk openly about it. That's the rule. It's well, that's like, we're going to start there. But yeah, if yeah, that's what yeah. she wants in the long run, right, right, I want something different. Then we just say, look. This is what this is what Fritz was so tried to help people understand. And it was so difficult because of these rules. He says, he goes the Gestalt therapy prayer. It's wonderful because it goes, I do my thing. You do your thing. <laughs> um, I am I, you are you. I'm mm -hmm. not in this world to live up to your expectations. You're not in this world to live up to mine. See, that was the basis. He called this the marriage prayer. And then he would go on mm -hmm. to say, if by chance we come together, our, mm -hmm. our expectations fit. Let's enjoy ourselves. If not, it just can't be helped. It's not like somebody's wrong. You see, at that point in time, and this is the hard thing of people accepting that somebody doesn't have to go along with your rules. It's your rule. It's important for you. And if it's important for you, you got to hear yourself. You've got to honor yourself. That may mean or it may not mean that you're going to be with the person that you're with. Maybe that no, so, so, see, I don't I don't disagree. I don't disagree in principle of what you're saying that I think. But it seems like you make such global statements that 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 are like. So just stop you know, feeling that way. I mean, because no, there's a lot of details. Not, 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 he's writing the, the Twitter thing. He's having the Twitter response. No, I'm well, not uh, feel that no, way. I, you get mad about it, scream about it, do whatever you need to do about it. But in the long run, you can get as mad as you want and try every trick in the book to try to get the person to be what you want them to be. If they're not going to be there, they're not going to be there. And it's right. the way it comes we're not, we're not, that's not, I'm not arguing that point. I'm, I'm just arguing that there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of details in how you talk there's through this stuff. Feelings about this and see, and this is the point is what well, I wasn't saying same feelings. I was saying a lot of details in terms of, of what you do to talk through this stuff with. Yes, people. exactly. Okay. But, but you know that, but look, what's going to come up is I, there's so much righteousness around this thing. I think my rules are the right rules. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's where this happens. And I see this all the time. Yeah, but you sort of sound like you're saying that now with this I stuff. I know it seems. But, but, but it does, but, it does but, seem like you're saying. I know. I, I'm right. This, this, is what we, this is what we argued about uh, for 45 oh, minutes I on know. a keynote speech in front. We're back in that argument again. And I love it. <laughs> and, and I'm not taking it personally. I Good. But see, my position <laughs> is, is that what my position here is one that promotes freedom. That's all I'm interested in is that people are together because they want to. There's no better reason to do anything because you want to. And nothing, what, nothing, what, nothing I'm doing does anything different. I, I know yeah. that. And yeah. so yeah. all I'm saying is, is that this position I have, the other one, these rules where I'm going to impose my rules on you, then now starts to get a sticky wicket. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah, but that's an either or. We're done with that. We we yeah. know we're not, we know that's not the solution. Imposing our my rules on you or you rules on my, me. It's it's what do we what do we what do we develop together is the question. Yes, when it comes to relationship and and and, and the principle that I really believe in and that I I see people talk about and I aspire to is mature love is based on people encouraging the other person to be who they are and to live with what and live according to what they want see yeah. that becomes the issue 
And when these unenforceable rules come into place, what they're essentially saying mm -hmm. is that you have to live this way for me to be okay. You have to be like this for me to be fine. Yeah. And see, and that's what we're trying. To, that's what I'm trying to bust up here. Is yeah, I'm, I, well, I'm, I'm right with you. I'm not arguing against that. I yeah. want to get rid of all that. We're looking mm -hmm. for a lot of freedom, right? You're here because you want to be mm -hmm. here. I'm here because I want to be here. And we're going to try to base a relationship based on what we want, not some rules, not according to some ideal. I love that. That was a, a statement that Walter had. He says, in a healthy relationship, it is based on who we are with each other not according to some ideal of what a healthy relationship is supposed to be like. Right. And see, and that's the part, but then you'd say, and what you say is, well, but aren't you doing that same thing by coming up with this idea? You know, that aren't you then imposing that is now the new rule about how relationships are going to be. Well, you, well what I'm saying, not so much that I, what I'm saying is, is you state it as if it is, you state as if it is objective truth, what you're saying, as opposed to their subjectivity to it. Well, it's, 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 it, uh. <laughs> my objective truth. It is. Okay. I, I get that. That's fine. Right? It's like, yeah, but, but, but I mean, sometimes it feels like what you I get plugged in, it, you know, it's, it, there is an objective truth that if you get enough wind moving across the top of a, a wings of an airplane it's going to lift right mm -hmm. there is mm -hmm. that thing and so there are certain principles at work when relationships have too many rules they can't take off right it kills them it stops the the movement of the 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 pressure changing the pressure ratio on yeah the right it's, it, what it comes this comes down to language too for me because this is that one of my favorite buddhist sayings is to be sure be, be careful not to mistake the finger pointing at the moon for the moon itself and it's like it's like it's like you know it, it's we get into the idea this is this is the this is the growing point for me the growing edge for me is is thinking back to that to that that 45 minute keynote uh, argument that we had you know is that uh we which, by the way, was, was always been an, been and remains an example to me of the of how how solid our relationship is and was from the beginning. Because it only it was only with hindsight did it occur to me. And talking to John Amadeo several days after that, that I realized I never once worried about losing connection with you. Right. It's like it's like which is which I realized also was strange because I not ordinarily in in the in times in the past I would have worried about such a thing, but it, it was like I did I didn't. But the idea here is, it's it, the my growing edge as I was saying is 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 what I'm listening for as you're talking is our points of agreement, and I'm getting it. I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm going like yeah. And sometimes I think we're actually just saying things differently. Oh, but but you're bringing up something. See, I think your reaction is what most people at as they hear this after, they have the same reaction, which is why it's so great you're having it. Because it, there's a point where it says, well, how, wait a minute, don't we have to have something? What is the relationship going to be based on then? See, it, it goes- Well, no, 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 good point. Because part of, part of my reaction is I, I do listen to our stuff. And maybe this is a codependent thing for me, but I think, I think like you said, it probably it's purposeful is I do listen to it from the point of view of what I imagine is sort of this imaginary what? listener out there to say, to say that sounds, that, that sounds, that, you know, that sounds awful. And that's one of the things I'm saying is like, I can say, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, but there's about, 106 steps in between those two things 106 steps but see i think it's the same reaction they're going to have tom so that's the value in your reaction to it is because people say my god that just doesn't seem possible how the hell can you make that happen and and i do think that there's a point saying that look when we when i talk about it this way i i'm not saying that we can achieve that but I am saying that there's a value in trying to reach for that goal. There's a value in trying to get to that place because that's where there's then room for two people rather than room for rules and see, and you know, it's maybe we've gone a long, excuse me, a long way from talking about not taking it personally, but it relates to the same thing because people no, have I, the same, same problem with it. You, are you kidding me? It's personal. Uh, and if you say that to me, I mean, how can you say something's not personal? And I mean, it's all tied into the same thing. So it's a very important discussion. Well, and, and not, not the least of which is that it, it, that it lands back. I think it's purpose. It's very important that it lands back in places where 
uh, where you, you and I don't see necessarily eye to eye, which we see most of the time, I think, in, in that stuff. And, and so I, I think there's also the demonstration of, which is what I, I'm teaching clients all the time about, you need to be able to have, you know, uh, Confl conflicts or disagreements or just different approaches and it'd be okay. It'd be part of the relationship. You don't, you know, everything that, everything that seems conflictual does not have to be resolved. You know, this is where I, I talk about conversations to convey rather than to convince. It's like, it's easy to have a debate. You know, it's like, I just want to go, eh, I hear it different. I think it differently doing that kind of stuff. And the cool part about it is I think, and maybe I'm overstating, you know, our value as role models, but I'm going like the idea that we, we have the, you know, we've had these conversations in the past and we can have them as long as we need to. Uh, and, and we're okay. I love you, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, my reaction, my reaction to it is uh, I feel like I've spent a lifetime being programmed with rules and expectations and I feel like it probably takes a second lifetime to deprogram. And I view what you guys are discussing as an aspiration, as like a unicorn in the distance, uh, because it's, uh, I'm just aware of the hurdles and I'm experiencing them daily uh, in trying to get to that place. So though I don't, I can't imagine myself ever being in this, you know, not trying to get there. I'll, I don't think I'll ever arrive, you know, but I think it's a process. Mm. Right on. Right on, man. All, All right. right. Well, I need I need to do this. One thing I need to do before we finish is is because of because of uh, I love uh, Miguel Ruiz's book as well. I have a lot of friends who are, are big Toltecers, and to, and I had one friend, or he wasn't really a friend. It was a guy I know that I worked for for a while, and I wanted to find out if he had a sense of humor. So I I, I made him a I, I made him a mug. I had, a, had my little gift shop and it's, and it's, and I, I'm looking at the saying on it right now. It, it, uh, I, I gave it to him as a gift to see if he had a sense of humor. Uh, he didn't. It's, I, I, it's, I heard nothing from him. It's, it says, got Toltec. And then underneath it says, be impeccable to your assumptions and don't take your best personally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't get the two sticks of dynamite. I <laughs> haven't, haven't heard from him since. I, <laughs> I think I think you hit one of his rules, where he probably <laughs> heard personally. Is what <laughs> I'm pretty sure he took it personally. <laughs> so, oh my god! Good talk, good talk, man. Yeah, good talk. I'm I'm exhausted. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> All right. So, how did they find out about your work, Tom? They could. They can go. They can go to my website, TomRutledge.com. They go to hell. Is they, go to, they, go to, they go. They go. They go. TomRutledge.com. They. Can, uh, I don't. I don't. Even, that mug may still be there on my gift shop. You may go look for that. But That's but uh, information about books and and stuff uh, are there. And uh, that book I talked about, uh, the uh, earning your own respect. I am working hard now to do some final edits. I'm going to get it back out there. It's it's still available to use, but it's out of print. But I really. I think these days with all this going on politically too, this whole thing of earning your own respect and this, and I think this, I think it is my emotional sobriety book because it's all about understanding your value system and living according to your value system. And two people who do that can be in a wonderful relationship who, who take, who take care of themselves individually that way. So anyway, that's, there's some information about that book on there too. Good. You can go to my website, abphd.com. Um, all of my stuff is there and um, uh, this show you can find a link to it from that website please tell other people about it encourage people to subscribe now next week we're going to have a guest right is it next week or the week after two, that? two weeks i think two weeks we're going to have a guest sherry gab is coming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. next week we'll see maybe we'll continue on this discussion and see what what uh, what's left to say about it but i so appreciate what you said patrick i think that mm -hmm. that's that is the right, you know, right on in terms of what it is. And that's probably what a lot of people are thinking as they listen to this. It's a great thing to aspire to. And my God, don't ever put your, set yourself up to think you could pull it off perfectly. Right. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. We're know. all, we're all on the same page. Hey, Patrick, one quick question. Did, when, when, when we're going at each other, some, does that uncomfortable for you at all? No, I, uh, I was, uh, just absolutely riveted uh, the entire episode today. And I just hope mm -hmm. that you don't mind my interjections. Oh, I love it. We love that. Cool. Oh, I uh, do. Yeah, no, I thought this we were really on fire today. So. <laughs> cool. All right, you guys, we'll see you on Thursday night. You think we're better with COVID? 
<laughs> I was gonna say there's uh there's some viral there's some viral uh boosting going on. All right, I'll see you guys on Thursday. And and yeah. <laughs> Bye. Deep in your heart, start right here. That's where it starts. Right here. Won't you look to your heart? It's always